Now there's no drain on the radiator. So what we're gonna have to do is take the lower radiator hose off and there's a hose clamp right there. We're gonna use a hose clamp remover tool. This is a cable type tool. And just move the hose clamp and grab the lower radiator hose and just slide it back. You might have to twist it back and forth a little bit. You could always use pliers for the hose clamp. And then you're going to want to have a drain bucket underneath to catch the coolant. Oh, and there's no coolant in this system right now, but normally you'd have a lot of coolant draining down. Take my hose clamp pliers off. And we'll take this cover off. There is push pins throughout the cover. Um, the ones over here, you can use a 90 degree pick. For this one, we'll just use a trim tool. Just try to get underneath here. Slide that up, take those out. Now I take this cover and slide it up. I'm gonna use a T20 and take these screws out. There's six of them. I did remove the front wheels, although you don't have to. You could always turn the wheel to one side or the other. I need to take these screws out. You're gonna use a T20 socket, take those out. two screws underneath here, take those out. With the same T20. On our vehicle, there's two 10 millimeter bolts right here and one on the other side and the bracket behind the bolt is actually broken. So we don't have to take these out on your vehicle. You're gonna wanna take those out. You can slide this back just to get it out of the way. Then we need to move this panel you can take a trim tool and just carefully get underneath here. It may be a little more difficult than this. You can just pry up. And sometimes these plastic clips break, but that's okay. Just keep that out of the way. And there's a fog light right here. Just disconnect that. Some vehicles don't have the fog light. Just push down on the lock and disconnect the connector. You can use a seven millimeter socket. Take this bolt out. Just like that. All right, then just grab this part of the bumper and just slide it out. It is clipped in. You'll do the same on the other side. Now when you take those off, the bumper's gonna be loose, so just be careful. Grab the front and just slide it out. I'm gonna remove this bracket. There's two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom. I'm gonna use a ratchet wrench to get those off. And then on top, there's two bolts on this side, two on the other. Use a 10 millimeter socket. To make it easier to move some stuff around, I'm gonna take these brackets off, use a 10 millimeter socket. There's one on this side, one on the passenger side. Let me just slide it up. I'll just take this piece off right here. Slide it up and you can separate the condenser from the radiator. There's two little tabs right here. Just push that. And then on the other side, same thing. Two little tabs and just slide that out of the way. These panels have to come off. You can use a trim tool. There's a little push clip here. And there should be one underneath here as well. And then on the radiator, there is these push retainers. Sometimes these can be tricky to get off. You can use a 90 degree pick and a trim tool. Just try to pry the fingers out a little bit. You can bend them a little bit and then try to bend them back when you go to put it back on. Just try not, try not to break it if you're gonna reuse it. So I'll just take those off. This one there, this one down here. And there's, there should be one. And there's one down there as well. And there's one more trim piece right here. This piece is actually broken, but just use a trim tool. Take this push pin out. That's good. Just try to slide it out of the way. And then you can do the same on the other side. And just slide that out. 
On this side, I'm not going to take this panel off completely. I just need to disconnect it from the radiator and move it back because I don't want to take the condenser lines off. We're not going to recover the refrigerant. We don't have a machine to do that. We're just going to have to move this out of the way. So make sure you don't take that nut off. Now I can just grab the condenser and just pull it up a little bit. Just have it out of the way. It should be good. It'll sit right there. You can take the cap off. Now you want to make sure before you drain the coolant or even take the cap off that the engine is cool. You don't want it to be hot. You can take this hose off that goes to the reservoir. And just slide it out of the way. Now I'm going to take this hose clamp off, use some hose clamp pliers or some regular pliers and just slide this out of the way. Now you can take the hose off. If you have to, you can use a 90 degree pick to try to loosen up the hose and slide it off. Just like that. We're going to disconnect the hood latch. There is a wiring harness that goes right here. Just take a trim tool and disconnect the wiring harness from the bracket and disconnect the connector. Slide that out. Before I take this off, I do want to mark this just so I put it back on the way it came off. Right there and right here. And I plan on taking this bracket off as well, so I'm going to mark this while I'm here. Just do the same. And I'll use a 10 millimeter socket, take these two nuts off, and then there's one on this side. And take that off, just slide it out of the way. Underneath, you're going to take these two nuts off, use a 13 millimeter socket. Now I'm going to take these two bolts out, use a 13 millimeter socket. And just grab the bracket and slide it out. Disconnect this electrical connector right here and just push down on the lock tab and slide, slide it out. Now we're going to disconnect the transmission cooler lines. Just slide this hose out of this bracket right down there. And then there's a little cover here. Slide this cover off. You can use a pick tool, slide that out of the way. And then there's a clip in there. What you have to do is slide the clip out and use a pick tool. They do make special tools to take these out. Once you slide it out, you can use the pick and just slide this off. You just pull it, pull it out all the way. And make sure you have a drain bucket underneath. You might lose some transmission fluid. And just slide this hose off over the side. We'll do the same with the other hose. Now underneath, I'm going to use a trim tool and just take this piece off. It goes around this bracket right here and that's holding me up. Just take any of those clips off. Now just grab the radiator and fan assembly and just slide it up. Might have to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Be careful of the condenser, you don't want to break it. There we go. And there it is. I'm going to remove this screw, use a T20. Pull that out. Take this screw out, use a T20. And there's two bolts on the side. Use a 10 millimeter socket, take those out. Now we can grab the fans, slide it up a little bit, and just slide it out. Those, and you're good. Now just take this bracket off. You can use a trim tool. Just try to slide that out. We're transfer that over to the new one, and there you go. Now this piece is going to have to get transferred over to the new one. Just take a trim tool or a screwdriver and just slide that off. Just take this, transfer it over to the new one. Just like that, that's good. Take these clips, these J-nuts, and slide that in position there. And same on the other side. 
Right, now take the fan shroud, slide it in position over here and over here. And make sure it lines up. And there we go. And take the bolt, get that one started right there. And same on the other side. Before I tighten these up, then I'll put these screws in and tighten this one down. Do the same on the top one. And snug these down. That's good. And you can put this bracket back on right there. And you can take these caps off. And there's two over here. Right there. All right, now I'll take this. Now, you want to check to make sure these are in. If these are still stuck to the radiator, swap them over. Put those in those positions. Right there, one on each side. You can slide the radiator down like it came out. There we go. Let me take the transmission cooler lines, line those up, and clip it in so that it locks in place. There we go. And then take that little cover that goes over that piece right there. Before I switch this bracket, I'll put the top one in and lock that in place. And then we can just twist the bracket. That's good. And we can plug the fan connector in, just like that, and hook up the upper radiator hose. Slide the clamp down. If the clamp's weak or extremely rusted, then you can replace it with a worm clamp. I can release this clamp with um, either a screwdriver or a trim tool. Just line it up, Just snap it like that, make sure it's good, and slide this bracket down in position. It's probably easier to line it up down below first. There we go, just like that. Get these nuts started. Before I tighten those up down below, take these two bolts, get these in position. Now I'll tighten these up, get that lined up. Now I can tighten them up underneath. Now I can line this up and put the nuts back on. I'm just going to get it close first and adjust it a little bit. And tighten it down. Now we got to plug the connector in, line that up and then push this back into the position where it's supposed to be, where the retainer is, just like that. All right, line up the condenser, and snap it into place. Now I can take this shield, slide this in position on this side. The other side, I didn't have to take this off completely. And it's back in position. Then you could take these push clips and slide those on. If these push clips aren't sticking right, just take a hammer with it on the ground. Just bend it back a little bit. Then you should be able to reuse it. And it's good. All right, take this piece, just put that back right there. All right, take these push pins, put those back. And get this panel lined up. If this is on the other side, just fold this down. Try to get this over, just like that. We can put those push pins in there. This push pin goes right here. Just like that. All right, I can put the lower radiator hose on. At this point, it's a little bit easier to do it with the bumper off. And slide the clamp over. Just get it in position. And release the lock. Reservoir hose over and attach that. You can put the radiator cap on. If you wanted to fill the radiator up right now, you could fill it, but you're gonna have to fill the reservoir as well. And take these upper radiator brackets, line those up, and put the bolts in and tighten those down. 
All right, now we can take this bracket and line this up just like that. And take these bolts, get these all started first, and snug those down. Now take the bumper cover and just line it up just slowly, get it in position. Just be careful not to scratch anything on the side. It would help if you have a helper helping you. Get this lined up and just snap that back in place. Then take the seven millimeter screw and line it up right here and snug it up. And push this back in, this trim piece. Then take the connector for the fog light and plug it in. Lock it in place. Then take all these screws, get these lined up. Just get them all started first and then you can tighten them down. Now take the screws from underneath, put these two in. Then if you had that 10 millimeter bolt on both sides, you're gonna wanna put those in as well. And tighten these down. Then from up top, you can put all these screws in and tighten them down. Now before you put this cover on, what you want to do is fill the radiator up with coolant. Use the appropriate coolant. Check your owner's manual and you could use a funnel or if you don't have one just top it off and also top off your reservoir. Then you're going to want to run the vehicle for about 10 minutes with the heat on. You want to monitor the temperature gauge while it's running and just make sure it doesn't go into the red. If it does, shut it off, recheck the level and start over. Do it again. After the engine's warmed up, shut the vehicle off, let it cool down, readjust the level, and you should be good. And take this panel, line it up, and then take the push pins, reinstall the push pins.